Technology is advancing so rapidly, the process of making art is more efficient now than ever before. But at what cost? I've been an artist for a long while now and sometimes I find myself focusing too much on trying to get to the finished product as quick as possible. Art has been my job so sometimes time is money but recently I found myself not having as much fun with the process so I wondered what the most satisfying process would be for me and I found a really fun one that I'm going to show you in this video. Obviously this is just my preference but I would love to hear what you think the most satisfying art process is. So I'm going to be drawing my character Lumber's house in a comic book style, which I originally designed in this concept art video. I'll be using brush pens, just some standard black ballpoint pens, some alcohol markers. These are the Ohuhu brand. You might have heard of Copic alcohol markers, which are the popular ones, but I didn't really fancy selling any of my organs to be able to try those out. I've got some basic colored pencils and some basic paper. You can get some more specialized paper, especially for alcohol markers, but I didn't know that yet. First part of this process is the digital sketch. I do this on Clip Studio Paint using a standard drawing tablet. I used to use a 13 inch Cintiq screen tablet, but I had a couple of issues that bothered me too much to use it. I'd get crazy back and wrist pain using this. I'd always ignore my posture and the color calibration between my monitors was super annoying. So I ended up getting a second hand Wacom Intros Medium. It was super cheap second hand. If you want to get into digital drawing, you don't need any fancy or expensive tools. I keep my eyes on the monitor so my sitting habits are a bit better, no more back or wrist pain and there's only one display that I need to worry about. Though this is all personal preference. I know some people who love screen tablets and I know some people who hate the standard tablets because it can be a little bit awkward to get used to. So you might be wondering why I'm not sketching traditionally and that's because I think sketching digitally removes a huge amount of pressure from this process. So when I finish the digital sketch I colour it all in blue, reduce the opacity and print it out. Now I can move on to the inking stage with the brush pen and if I don't like it or if I mess it up then I can just print it out again. So for the inking, these are the two main brushes that I'll use. I find the Pentel brush pen to be a little bit too thick, but you do get a huge variety in line weight, which is nice. You don't get as much control with it at smaller sizes, and I typically draw small in an A4, A5 size or less. So this Tombow Fudonoske soft tip is my favorite for inking. It just gives so much control over the line weight and it is super satisfying to use. So with my sketch printed out and a slight hesitation as to where I'm going to start with this, I make the first stroke. And the satisfaction starts right away. I don't know if this looks satisfying. That feeling of using a brush pen on paper, the way it bites, the way the line has some variation, the way the ink runs onto the page, my goodness, if you have not tried out brush pens, you need to try brush pens. Now I find digital inking can be really frustrating at times. I always find myself trying to get the perfect line, constantly undoing and redrawing and undoing and redrawing over and over again. But with traditional inking, I just go for it. No second guessing and I actually end up really appreciating the little mistakes rather than trying to hide them. You know, maybe I could disable the undo button when I try digital inking next time. Perhaps that would be a fun challenge to try and maybe that would make that process more satisfying. The good thing about having a rough sketch that's really light and not super defined is I can also improvise some details as I do the inking. You know, it's not just mindless following the lines. I'm thinking about the line weight. Maybe I can make the lines thicker in the darkness and thinner to indicate a reflection of light. And I'm also wondering what little details and textures I can add along the way. I'm basically problem solving as I draw, but it's not all problem solving. I think maybe satisfaction in art could be broken down into a nice balance between problem solving, familiarity and exploration. Familiarity in the process can be quite meditative, but too much of it and the process can become stale and boring. Problem solving is fun, it helps you learn, but if there's too many problems that need to be solved, you don't make as much progress and it can become frustrating. An exploration in art can lead to happy accidents and discovering new styles and techniques and ways to do things, but too much exploration and you lose a sense of direction. And to me, I prefer a little bit more problem solving than familiarity. What do you think this little graph would look like for you? Do you prefer problem solving or familiarity? Let me know in the comments. 
And with this ink in, there's a very comic book and cartoon style. And that really works for me because I definitely prefer stylized over realism. There's something about simplifying subjects and expressing them in very basic shapes that I find to be just really satisfying. And I think this is why I also find working in small pixel art sizes to be more satisfying than larger pixel pieces as well. Breaking it down into the small shapes, maybe some super satisfying anti-aliasing to, to soften out those hard edges. Yes. Small, beautiful, cartoony shapes. That's what I like. What kind of style do you prefer to make? Cartoony or realism? So to colour this in, I'm going to be using alcohol markers, which I've always wanted to try, but I've never actually used before. You get to make these cool little swatches so you can see how the colours look when you dry. And with that, you can plan out your piece accordingly. I found it super fun to do a little doodle of the house and test out the colour sections within that before I commit to actually colouring it. There's a learning curve that comes with any new tool or process, but I find that learning matches perfectly with the exploration and problem solving nature of satisfaction. For these alcohol markers in particular, I learned that the fine point and chisel tips have very different application techniques and I tried to get used to them. There are also multiple ways to blend these markers too. You can do a light to dark process, you can use a blending pen, but I found I preferred blending dark to light. But figuring all of that out is part of the fun. These weren't the only tests I did, by the way. I was doing this for an entire video, which is already out, so you might have already seen that. But for that video, I did a huge amount of these drawings, which was super helpful to get used to the new tools. I was really happy with the line drawing and I really didn't want to mess it up. So there's definitely a little bit of pressure. Now there's time to color on top of it. But the cool thing about traditional art is I can just scan it in and preserve it if I want to. If everything goes wrong with these next colors, I could just color it in digitally. But I decided to color this way because I want to learn the markers and it's super slow. You know, keyboard shortcuts, layers and fill tools make coloring digitally super quick and completely risk free. But because of all those things, I've over optimized that process for speed rather than for fun. And this hand coloring process was a huge contrast to that. I'm beginning to understand why coloring books are so popular, right? They're just super chill. Because I figured most of the colors out from my tests earlier on, for the most part during this, I could just sit, listen to music and enjoy it. it. Became really relaxing. And this is where the familiarity portion of the triangle kicks in. It wasn't all familiarity, there's still some problem solving and exploration here. I was adding some color variation to the wood with different hues that I wasn't expecting to use. Just seeing what interesting colors I could get out of that. And also a problem was some of the colors weren't as dark as I was hoping for. So I had to improvise a little bit and add some darker colors. And I'd never done a rock path before, but I found a super fun process where I could add little blotches of rocks in different colors and I went over that with a solid color and you could see all of the little blotches come through because of that opacity of the alcohol marker which gives some really interesting variety and textures as well. I mentioned earlier that trying this out is for a video I was making and actually I was really apprehensive to share this artwork in that video. Sometimes I find it difficult to put that new stuff out there. You know I kind of fear that I'm not good enough or that people might respond negatively to a change. So I was really thankful actually when Skillshare decided to sponsor this video. Skillshare has a bunch of classes in art, animation, video production, and a wide variety of other technical skills. But did you know Skillshare also have hundreds of career focused classes as well? As I've shared in this video, my goal with creativity now is to get back to having fun and trying new things. And Skillshare has been helping me learn some creative confidence, silencing that nightmare inner critic. I particularly enjoyed taking the Creativity Unleashed class by Nathaniel Drew. I found it really helpful to hear his experience. Learning that uncertainty, frustration and doubt is a completely normal part of the creative process. And I learned that trying something new and the fear of criticism that comes with that can be overcome by being kinder to yourself and focusing on the things that you can actually control like enjoying the process. And that's exactly what I've been trying to do with this video. I would definitely recommend checking this out. The first 1000 people to use the link in the description will get a whole one month free trial of Skillshare. There's a whole bunch of classes to choose from. You'll easily be able to find something that suits you and your goals. But there's no need to be overwhelmed either because no goal is too small. A huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and enabling creators to do their thing. To finish this piece off, I was experimenting with that black ballpoint pen, adding subtle wood texture to the house with grain lines and spirals, and also little tufts of grass. I think those little touches really bring it all together. 
but we're not done yet. The awesome thing about physical art is I can scan it in and create some awesome things. I turned the line work into a colouring page that you can get for free. There's a layered digital file and an image file if you want to print it out and colour it in. If you do, definitely send me the final result, I'd love to see. I also put a print of Lumber's house and a sticker pack on my store if you want to support the channel. And because I had no idea what to do with all the little loose pieces I had, I created this simple collage. I don't really need it, so if anyone wants it, I'm going to put it on eBay for 99p. So <laughs> I guess get your hands on the first ever Saltoons original art? I don't know. You can burn it if you want. Hope you enjoyed watching this process. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.